What's going on everybody and welcome back to my channel Movie Files. Elliot back again with a brand new Netflix movie review and today we're discussing part one of the new trilogy on Netflix titled Fear Street part one 1994. I am just super excited to let you all know my thoughts on this movie. And if you haven't seen it quite yet, I'm going to let you know why this is a must-see movie over this weekend. But we're going to break it all down in the spoiler-free review. But before we do so, make sure you're following me on all my other social media accounts. If you all are new to the channel, well, welcome to the community. Consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. That way you can get the alert for when I drop new content. If you all enjoyed this spoiler-free review of First Street Part 1, 1994, well, make sure to like the video, share the video. It helps out the channel a lot, but also appreciate the support. And in the comments, let's have some dialogue around this film. Number one, were you excited for it? Did you read the novels growing up? Do you still read them today? And once you've seen the film, what were some of your favorite moments? What was your favorite kill, your favorite character? What were some things that didn't work for you? And after you got done watching this film, will you be back next week and the week after that to complete this trilogy? Let's talk about it in the comments below. So I just kind of alluded to it there uh, a second ago. This movie is based on novels that came out in the late 80s through the 90s, and they still actually go on today. I personally haven't read any other Fear Street novels, but I'm familiar with the IP. But listen, the trailer sold me. I'm a core fan through and through, and in particularly the subgenre in regards to slashers. We don't get enough slashers, and when we do, they're trash. I, I, the last good slasher that I liked was probably whew, seven years ago. Uh, you're next. <laughs> it might be some others that is not coming to mind right now, but I love a good slasher, and I just want to jump right into this review, starting off with my positives, starting off with the director of this film, Lee Jan Ayak did such a great job with this movie. She's going to be directing all three, and I'm so excited to see the rest of these two films based off, based off this first one. She does a, such a great job at number one, 1994. It's taking place in, in the 90s, which I'm born in the 90s. So, Directors nowadays, they spend so, in my personal opinion, and not all the time, but most of the time, they spend so much time of like referencing the time period. Hey, Easter egg, reference, focus on this, that, music, soundtrack, all that stuff. They focus so much on that that they lose focus on the story and the characters at hand. But Lee does a good job at embracing the 90s, but making the story just happen to be in the 90s. There's, you know, we have Creep playing in the background by Radiohead. We have the grungy look. We have the computers. We have all the stuff that take place, you know, people tucking in their shirts, their jean uh, shorts and all that stuff. But it doesn't it doesn't rely on that to tell his narrative. So I appreciate the not over-focusing on the time period, but appreciating the time period because this is a slasher that takes place in the 90s, and some of my favorite slasher films take place in the 90s, a la Scream, which, listen, ladies and gentlemen, you ever been in love and you have love at first sight? That's how I feel about this movie. From the opening sequence, I was in love with this film because it pays homage to one of my favorite slashes of all time, and that is Wes Craven's uh, Scream. And this film pays homage to it perfectly from the framing of the shots to the suspense of the shots to literally a sequence that is like ripped out of Scream and not like not just straight up stealing it from it. It's just paying homage to Scream. And even from the actress who's involved in this scene, which by the way, this isn't a spoiler, the opening scene's on the internet, Netflix released it publicly. Having Mia Hawke be in the scene, who, in my personal opinion, she's the most like recognizable actress within this crew. Having her be the Drew Barrymore in the situation was just so perfect. And listen, when I say love at first sight, as we all know, that's been in relationships and fall in love. There are some, you know, pet peeves, some things that I didn't really enjoy that I'll talk a little bit about later. But from the opening scene, I was just so hooked into this movie. Again, the direction was really there. The homage in the '90s, the homage to classic slasher films, and also something for me about horror films. In general it's the rush it's the adrenaline it's the thrilling aspects but it's the characters that i really care about because we all know especially if you're a horror fan you have those characters that you just want to see get you know hacked off within the first five minutes they're just not good actors they're just so annoying but i have to say for me personally i really enjoyed this cast number one the cast was casted perfectly for their age group because I cannot tell you all enough how much I hate seeing YA movies and shows when they have a 16-year-old that looks like a 35-year-old and it could be the principal of the school. But not in this case. These kids look like teenagers and they play like teenagers, especially teenagers in the 90s, which I thought was great. From our main character, Dina, who's our main uh, lead throughout the film, who's going through some uh, recent breakup. She has her younger brother played by Josh, who Josh was great. He's the classic, knows it all. He knows the stuff that's going on 
the town, the curse that's on this town, and all the stuff that we're going to talk about in the future films. But he was great. The two friends, Kate and Simon, they were great additions to the cast. And also Samantha, who's very pivotal to the story, who not only is going through a recent breakup of her own, uh, but also she has a curse that she's trying to break. So I really enjoyed this cast. I was rooting for them. And I was really just fond of these young actors. They did a really good job of just embracing their characters. And I love that this film was rated R. I can't stress enough how much fun a rated R slasher film can be. Again, you can do PG-13. We've seen it with the Happy Death Day Part 1 at least. And there's other horror films that play within that PG-13 rating. But when you can get R, the blood, the guts, the swear words, and the situations that the characters are in, it just makes it more organic. It makes it more entertaining for me. So that was great. And I got to talk about these kills without spoiling anything. I'll just say my favorite kill in the film, and I enjoyed all the kills, by the way, but my favorite kill has to be in the grocery store and I'll just kind of leave it at that so great cast great kills there's multiple villains throughout the film that you can see in the trailer from our skull face killer to our Jason Voorhees killer to our ghost killer and just the whole setup of what this film did such a great job at is it's setting up the next films from characters like the sheriff characters like some background characters you know there are setting up the seeds for the next one which i believe is going to take place in a summertime camp situation very jason Voorhees in a character that we meet in this film which i can't wait for but it sets up the next two so well so again i can go on and on about the production cool soundtrack really fun time very entertaining some awesome kills but let me talk a little bit about my criticisms this isn't breaking the will. This isn't uh, reinventing the will of horror. There are some tropes that we've seen before, whether it be you know, splitting up the crew, uh, whether it be, you know, certain characters taking forever to really kind of realize what's going on, especially it seems like a character has done the exact same thing, but it takes them to the end of the film to realize what's happening. And there's all different other tropes that, again, we've seen a million times, but again, to kind of blend my criticisms with my negative, my, my positives, they find a way to make it work. They find a way to be self-aware of the situation. This film is not overly planned itself, not overly serious. It has fun, but again, there are some tropes that we've seen a million times that can make certain things a little bit more predictable than what you would like it to. So it's not all completely original in that sense. And then my only, only criticism, the film clocks in right around an hour and 47, one hour and 48 minutes. I feel like the film would have been perfectly positioned if it was just an hour and a half. So it's not that they wasted time in the film but i just feel like they could have probably slimmed about 10 to 15 minutes off there's a particular part in the second half of the film involving uh cleaning of the body and, and there's also a particular part towards the back half of the third act which just felt like it kind of went on a little bit too long so if they could have slimmed about 10 minutes off it would have just been perfectly paced but those are my only criticisms i mentioned most of my positives so before i give you my overall thoughts on my score again make sure to like share comment below subscribe to the channel if you haven't already Overall, Fear Street Part 1, 1994, is the Netflix gem that I've been waiting for. I am a Netflix watcher, and you all know, because I review them as often as I can, a lot of Netflix movies are borderline mediocre or trash, but when every now and then Netflix hits you with a gem, hits you with something fun, entertaining, this reminds me, I had so much fun this film. This is probably the most fun I've had in a, in a horror film in such a long time. It plays in that kind of that vein. If you all have seen, this was like three or four years ago, Babysitter on Netflix. It kind of has that same vibe where it's just fun, energetic, fun characters, interesting characters with some awesome kills. So with all that being said, Fear Street Part 1, 1994 is going to get a four out of five for me. I can't recommend it enough. I can't wait to rewatch this film and I cannot wait to see what the next one has up its sleeve, especially the setup and the trailer that we get in this film as well as the last one, 1666, which really kind of sets up this first one. Again, this is such a fun film, and kudos to Netflix for doing this weekly, not dropping it all at, uh, at once. So I can't wait to explore what they have up their sleeve next week and expect a review for that film. So that's my thoughts. Again, four out of five, highly recommend it. Slasher fans, horror fans, you're in for a treat if you haven't seen it quite yet. So you got my thoughts on the film. Again, if you stuck around to the end of the video, I appreciate you all. Again, make sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. That way you don't miss any other content. Hope you all have a great 4th of July weekend, and we'll see you in the next video.